So everyone, welcome back to uh, Breslov Efrat here in Shira David Baruch Hashem. What another beautiful uh, Nate's minion. Today is I and other. It's Maish Rebbeinu's uh, birthday. Maish Rebbeinu's yard site. Rabin Shal Yisrael. Maish, uh, Klai Yisrael. Uh, the Rebbe of all of, 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 all of Klai Yisrael. Maish Rebbeinu is the true Rebbe of all of Klai Yisrael. And uh, today we're going to continue with Siata Deshmai, of course, our lessons in Lakute Halachas. And we're in Hilchas Tzitzis Halacha Hey. And today we're in the middle of les, a letter Chav uh, Dalet 24. So we left off, we left off yesterday, where it starts off with Vizeu Hine Nasati Elif Kesef Lachicha. You have that? Remember mm-hmm. we said mm-hmm. we left it off yesterday? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's just review a couple of things, what was going on over here. So we learned so many different concepts yesterday, right? We learned so many different concepts of the tzitzis and what they mean, right? Just to review for, for, for a moment, right? We said yesterday that the tzitzis is, uh, is, is a sheer, poshet, kofel, mishulish, maruba. Remember we learned that yesterday? So we said sheer, poshet, right? And then we said uh, kofel. So we said, what is, what is kofel? We said that that is, the, that is uh, chachma bina, chachma bina. Right, remember we said Sholish, Mishulish, right? We said Mishulish was Chesed Givura Tiferes. That was Mishulish. And the our and the and the and the and the and the Shir Rebuya was was uh, the four is uh is uh Netzachoid Yesai the Malchus. Remember we learned that yesterday? No? Yeah, okay, we have to that's exactly what this book was giving Shir yesterday. Well, he went to our, he listened to our Shia first on, on, on the YouTube, and then he had, he had his preparation. That's how it works. That's how it goes. That's what we were learning yesterday, right? Did we, did, we, did we not learn that yesterday in the morning? Yeah, yes. And it's connected to the Yud K, Vav K. Remember we said that yesterday, right? The four corners of the Tzitzes are connected to the Yud K, Vav K, right? Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, and then, and then we said that we have, and then we said that we have 39, we have 39 wines, and we said 39 wines is Hashem Echad, right? Yud Kei Vav Kei is 26, right? Echad is the 13, gives you 39. Remember we learned that? And that's why we take the tzitzis in our hands before we, put, we say the Kriyashma. We take the tzitzis in our hands because we want to have, we want to make the unification. Hashem Echad, together we want to have Hashem Echad, if it's Hashem is Echad, and therefore, the tzitzis helps us do that. The tzitzis helps us to remind ourselves, to remind us that Hashem is Echad, uni, the unity of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So that was what we learned yesterday. And then we learned this concept of, of, uh, of, of, um, of Sari Mena that was taken into the house of Avi Melech, remember? Sari Mena went into the house of Avi Melech, and that was the Tzadikas, this, which was the, the, the pious woman. The, the great pious woman that was taken into the house of Avi Melech. Why was she taken into the house? Because she had to extract from Avi Melech all of the all the purity, all of the holiness that he had taken, that he had that he had taken all the sparks of holiness that all of the, the villains of the <coughs> world tried to take. And, and Sari Menu went into the was taken into the house of Avi Melech in order. To go into the into that place and to to extract, to extract all of the holiness, right? Remember that, right? Good. Okay. So let's see now today. So now look the interesting thing now. I gave I gave a thousand silver coins to your brother. Right? She was thinking Avram Avinu kept saying that sorry Menu was his was his sister, remember? So, so even though Avi Melech understood that he, 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 they're actually a husband and wife, but since, but since it was said that she was the sister, so the Torah goes on to say, nasati elef kesef la'achicha, to your brother. See that? Isn't that amazing? You ever think of that? Right? Even though he knew now, when he gave him, the, he understood already what was going on. Because HaKadosh Baruch gave him the makas, HaKadosh Baruch gave him the plagues. He knew about it already, Right? But he still says, I gave the, 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 the okay, good, interesting, interesting, right? V'zeh b'chinas ha-netzoitzis ha-kedoshim, she-hechrichichu, she-hechrichu, lo-hoitzi l'hachsi el ha-kedusha. In other words, we understand like this. When we, we learned the concept, how does it apply to us? 
when we daven a tefillah with a tefillah shebekoyach, a tefillah shebedin, how do we do that? When we recognize the situation we find ourselves in, and we 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 call, so we say we so to say call out Hashem, Hashem. I know it's not this thing. I know it's not that. I know it's you. I know it's you, Hashem. You're the one that's causing this. I know it's you, Hashem. That's what Yitzchak Avinu was able to do all the time. That's why Yitzchak Avinu was Yitzchak Tzchoyk. Tzchoyk, he laughed. Why, did he, why was Yitzchak laughing? He's din. How can Yitzchak Avinu laugh if he's din? He's judgment. He's punishment. How can he laugh? Because Yitzchak Avinu understood, hey, it's you, Hashem. He said, you, you, the Yetzirah, the, the Sitrach is trying to convince me that it's this guy, this guy, this guy, or that. But I see right through it, Hashem. I know it's really you. I know it's really you. And that's what he was laughing about. Because the world thinks it's all, it's everything else. But I laugh because I know the truth. I know it's really you, Hashem. That's what it's all about. That's the Tzvilah Shabbatin, okay? So when we can do that, when we can do that, we can take out, we can, with, with, we can, so to say, withdraw, we can extract all of the sparks of holiness that the other side took from us. Took from us. All the times we go to Davin and we're not paying attention, our mind wanders, right? Many times, right? You're, you're Miller Davini, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're Miller Shmonas, right? Right? It happens to everyone, right? You mean this morning, you say, the, the next thing you know, you're saying, Allah Tzaddik, wait, 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 what happened to all of these other, wait, wait, where was I? Where was I? Right? Where was I? Right? We all experience that? Did we experience that, right? Yeah. We say the words, right? We said the words, but we're just like, we're checked out, right? We're out to lunch or something, right? <laughs> Is that the expression, right? He's out to lunch? Is that the expression that people use? Yeah. Yeah. He's out to lunch, right? So, oh yeah, yeah. No, no. But okay, so but now, but we're learning. But when you can dive in that feel with within, you can take back all of those things, all of those brachas, all of those tfilas, all of those things that he took from you. Why did you why were you why were you see we think that it's because, you know, I, I, I'm not paying it. To this. No, it's the, it's the other side distracting us. That's what it is. It's distracting us. He's not allowing us to focus. That's the whole thing. So again, when we can daven that tefillah shabedin, we can, we can, so to say, redeem now, take back all of those nitzaytzais, and that's what we said. That was, that was Yerushen Nukel. And we said yesterday we learned that there was going to be our holy Yerusha because we take it back. Now look at this. So now that's what that's what was going on. That's what was going on with with Avi Melech. He felt because Sari Menu challenged him. He had to give back the kedusha. So we're learning it, and as Reb Nassim is teaching us here that this is actual a thousand silver coins. But really, it's a deeper message. In other words, the money was never important to Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu couldn't care less about riches. He had a Kaddish Baruch Hu. He didn't need riches. Hashem, the, uh, power, uh, uh, Avram Avinu didn't need any riches, correct? But he understood that the riches is connected to holiness, spirituality. Kisufim. He understood that the Kisufim, yes, yes, Kesef, Kisufim. He understood, he understood it was, so that's why he accepted it, because he understood that. The same way when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told Avram Avinu, your children can go down from Mitz, to Mitzrayim for 400 years, and Avram Avinu says, okay, he doesn't say a word, he doesn't say anything. When it came to Sedaim, wow, he had so many things, the Sadiqim there, you're going to destroy the Sadiqim with the, with the, with the wicked people. When it came to going down to Mitzrayim for 400 years, and they're going to be pained, HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him. He doesn't say anything. Why? Hashem said they're going to go out with Berechush Godel. So you're going to say to me, wait a second, Avram Avinu was so happy that his children would be wealthy? Is that what he was so happy about? No, he understood that the Berechush Godel is the Torah. The Torah is the Berechush. That's our real Berechush. That's our real wealth. The Torah is our real wealth. Avram Avinu understood that when, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu told him that your children are going to go up with the Rechush Gadol, he knew it wasn't money. He knew it wasn't money. He knew it was going to be the Torah. And to get the Torah, we had to be broken a little bit. We had to be broken a little bit to be built to be the people we need to be built in order to accept the Torah. So Avram Avinu was okay with that. You understand? 
You understand this? So now, again, here, Avram Avinu with the money. So don't think Avram Avinu understood it was the money. He wasn't interested in the, in the money itself. Avram Kesef Urechush Hoyin Rav. To give Avram Avinu the silver and, and, and great, great wealth. Great wealth. Avram Avinu got great wealth, but that's not the great wealth that we think. Yes, it was physical wealth. He did get money. But, but it was really what he was concerned, was what he was concerned about was the spiritual uh, uh, sparks that came together with that money. And that's what he enjoyed. And that's what Avram Avinu wanted. He has to, he has to spew it. He has to regurg, spit it up. In order to give it back to the, to the side of Kedusha. Mm. Unbelievable what was going on here. Sari Main was taken into the house of Avi Melech. She wages, he wanted to put the, we learned yesterday, he wanted to put the Zuma of the, he was, he's from connected to the Nachash. He's connected to the Nachash the same way he put his filth into, into Chava, into Chava. And now he wanted to do that again into Sari Menu. So what does Sari Menu do? Sorry, Menu attacks him. She is such a big sadeka. She attacks him and she makes him give back everything he took until now. Unbelievable. Yeah, you see that? Is that amazing? Because the fact that he wanted to be shaylit on Sarah. So why, what do we learn? If someone comes to attack you, what do you do? You go and attack them. <laughs> don't, don't stay around. Right? Don't stay around. Attack him. Because that's what Sari Menu was. Sari Menu is this idea of the, of the, of the righteous that go into battle with the other side in order to, to extract all this, the, the, the spirituality, so that way it can be for them a Yerushenu Kel, it can be something of a, of a, of a true Yerusha, a godly Yerusha, because they were able to take it back. So again, never feel upset, never feel, you know, if, if you felt that, you know, you weren't paying attention in your davening, of course we try our best, but if you, if you ever feel that it didn't go, remember, you keep it, maybe write it down, maybe mark that down. I was in the middle of my Shema in Esra and this day, and my Espaida just talked to the Rabbi Shalom, hey, look at this, I was cheated. Hashem, I was cheated today. I was robbed today, Hashem. During Espaida this, right? I was robbed today, Hashem, my Tvila. I was trying to dive in, and I was robbed by the, he, he stole it from me. Bring him up on charges. Why not? He stole it. I, 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 I came to show, I was here, I tried my best, and then what happened? I got robbed. In broad daylight. It's very good practical. Huh? You it's like very, that? Yeah, it's very practical. Okay, okay. All right, good. Well, these are the ideas that, you know, that we develop over the years, you know, the things of, 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 of tachbulot. You know, you need, you need tachbulot when, you, when you're dealing with your esbodot. So, strategies. Strategies. So, so you got robbed of your part of your shmona history. How would you get it back? I, I didn't hear. What, you get it back... back. But being aware of it. No, when when it, when a situation comes up in in life, and you and you're about to flare up at this guy or that one, and you recognize, and you see right through you. No, no, Hashem set this guy up. I'm tested now, and you turn to Hashem. You say, Hashem, I know it's you. Hashem, I know it's you. It's not this guy. It's not this thing. It's not that. I know it's you. Right. That's a tefillah shabedin. When you re- when you reveal Hashem, Hashem made the game of high go seek. You know, remember that game? Yeah, the kids sure. love that game, right? Everyone loves it, right? So it's so much fun to find it, right? Yeah. Right. You ever, remember playing that game, yeah. Sasha? Yeah. You ever played that game? Yeah, and the kids love that game, right? They love that game. They try to find the game. They, they buy. They go, oh, and they're so happy, right? Hashem made that game. It's His game. Hashem goes and hides, and He wants us to find Him. And the same way you have a joy when the kid finds the other, the other kid, when he refines him. Can you imagine the joy when you find Hashem in the situation? Hmm. Hmm. Right? In that situation, you don't know, it's you, Hashem. I know it's you, Hashem. <laughs> you set me up for this. So I'm not going to lose my cool. I'm not going to get upset. I'm not going to flare back. It's, 
what did the mother of those kids said. She saw, she saw the Yad Hashem. Amazing. That's a tefillah shabedin of yeah. all tefillahs. Yeah. When the mother does that. When the mother does that, that's a tefillah shabedin of all tefillahs. I, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah, of course. She, who knows? Who knows what she accomplished for Klal Yisrael with those words? Really, we have we have no idea. We have no idea. Yeah. This is more much like you know, like Sarah, like like yeah. there are any uh, greatest yeah. people in Jewish yeah. you know history. Hashem was the, the nice and he's the locker. He gives mm-hmm. and he takes, mm-hmm. right? He gives and he takes, and Hashem picks the you know he picks the the, the choicest ones. Uh, unbelievable, the most beautiful people he takes. The most beautiful neshamas. And they have to be a beautiful nisham because they have to be, a, if it's a carbon, yeah, it has to be yeah, pure. It has to be pure and perfect. All those yeshiva boys. Pure and perfect. Pure and perfect. Again, we have no idea, but yeah. again, we, let's use the words of the mother. Yeah. How the mother can, can, can have such... Uh, and from the mother, it's the, it's, the, it's, the, it's, the, it's the hardest thing, the mother that gave birth to these children. Think about it. She nurtured these children over the years. She dealt with them. She cried with them. She cuddled them. She hugged them. She, she cared for them all the years. And she could say such words. Unbelievable, right? That's a tefillah Yeah. yeah. But, but again, that's, that's, on the, that's on a very, very, very high level. We could do this on, on simple levels as well. Yeah. You know, when, 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 you know, when, I mean, it's the simplest thing. You know, you're, you're driving, you want to park your car. And then the guy comes and he, 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 you know that feeling, right? You know, you want to take that spot, you're waiting there, right? And the next thing you know, a car zooms in, right? You ever happened to you? Right? It happened to me, it happened to you? So what do you want to do? You want to give this guy, what do you think you're doing here? Who, who, who do you think you are? I'm just waiting, right? Hashem, I know that. It's okay, Hashem. <laughs> I got it, Hashem. It's okay. All right, so then the other guy's going to think that you're some uh, wimpy guy that, you know, you don't do anything, and he's so happy. He's like, wow, look at that. I, I was a Minatseya, right? <laughs> I, but, but again, that's how we win. This is the way we can win. Okay, ve'ata mechubo meyushav ha'mikra heite b'saifei l'roishay. So now Rav Nassim is going to make a, a beautiful connection of the Pasuk. Because we said yesterday, the Pasuk was, by Avi Melech, he gave to Avram Avinu, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the thousand silver coins, and he gave for Sari Menu, he gave the Kisuse Nayim. Remember we said that? In the same Pasuk, right? Sari Menu gets a Kisuse Nayim. She gets a covering for her eyes, an eye covering. What's a Kisuse Nayim, right? What would you say, Kisuse Nayim? How would you translate that? I don't know. No, <laughs> a Nayim, not a Panim, a Nayim. No, no, a, a gar, no, no, well, no, kid, a sun, he gave a pair of sunglasses? No, 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 we're trying to understand what's that doing in the Pasek, right. when he gets money, she gets this kind of covering for the eyes or something, what is, so let's see what, let's see what Nassim does now here. Al peep shutai, ain miyush of klal perish ha if you just look at the Pasek itself, the Pasek really, on the Pasek shot, it doesn't seem to seemingly make sense. Seemingly make sense. What is the connection? How do you connect? How do you how do you how do you make this uh, juxtaposition? Juxtapose, right? How do you juxtapose? You like that word? How do you juxtapose these two words, right? How do you these two things? Here you have the money and the eye covering. How do you put these two together? Vigam Rashi Zal, my Even Rashi was grappling with this. He was trying, having trouble with how am I going to put this together? You can take a look if you want to look and look at the Rashi. You'll see. Avalatal Pianal. But now that we learned this lesson from Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Nachman gave us this lesson, this teaching. Now let's put it together and see how wondrous that Pasuk really is. Now watch this. You're going to see now the, how you can bind together, how you can join together the, the, the beginning of the Pasuk to the end of the Pasuk. How it really works together and it flows perfectly. Because when you have that tefillah that we keep learning about, 
of the tefillah of the balkaya, the person that's powerful, that mighty warrior, that tzaddik, that person, that tzedekah, that davens to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a balkaya, she might see HaKadusha Mea That person, that balkaya can take the Kedusha, all the holiness out from the other side, all that he stole from Kalal Yisrael over the years, he robbed from Kalal Yisrael over the years, the Balkoya can go and take that Kedusha out and bring it back, like we said, so it can be for Kalal Yisrael a Yerushenu Kel, it can be a, can be a, 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 holy, a holy Yerusha. She'i bechines l'kicha sara l'beis ha'vimelech, think about it, sorry menu was taken into the house of Avi Melech. This great, this great pious lady is taken into the house of this monster. He's a monster. He's a monster that just wants that, that, that that's involved in, in in promiscuity. He's a monster that's just involved in all kind of garbage. Sorry, Mainu was taken into his house. Think about it. We read the story, but, but we don't think about it. What would the heck? Why was she doing taken into his house? What? Shall you day zeh haitzia kol nitzaytzeis hakedusha misham? So in other words, we think we think that sorry, man, it was was oh my gosh, this is my worst day. I'm taken into this guy's house. This is a terrible day. Sorry, man, it doesn't look it like that. Sorry, man, it does not look at it. This is a hard day. I'm in a difficult situation. I find myself with Avi Melech. Sorry, man, she captures this moment. She takes this moment. She takes the moment and she spearheads the moment. She uses that moment that she's taken in here and she says, now I can, now I can, I can attack. I'm in the right place. I'm an undercover agent over here. I can attack. Sari Main was going in as an under. She, Avi Melech thought she's a vulnerable lady and he can attack her, right? Avi, Avi, Avi Melech thought that Sari Main was a vulnerable lady. He can attack her. He can get what he wants from her. But what does Sari Main say? Ha <laughs> ha, you, you think you got me. Sari Main says, uh, she uh, sees the moment. She took that moment and what did she do? She was able to attack. Rather than being attacked, she attacked. You understand what happened? She attacked Avi Melech. And then she attached herself to the Chut Shal Chesed. She attached herself to the Chut Shal Chesed. We said, what's the Chut Shal Chesed? That's the Chut of HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Chesed. Where HaKadosh Baruch Hu runs the world the Chesed Chinam. That he does everything for free. That's the Chut Shal Chesed. That's the Chut Chesed we said is 72. Connected to the, to the Kinar of David HaMelech which is Mashiach, which is my Shrabin, if you want to say, it doesn't matter. It doesn't, whatever it is, that kina, whoever is going to have that, that harp, that harp is going to have 72 strings on it. That's the song, right? That's the song. She connects herself to the, to the, to, to the, to the, to the Chut Shal Chesed, which is the song of Mashiach, which is the song of redemption. That's what Sari Mani was attaching herself to. Shehu Bechina Tzitzis, which is Tzitzis, Tzitzis, we learned the 72 also, right? Then she can go and rebuke in the proper way. And that's what it is. When we can have a tefillah b'shebedin, and we connect ourselves to the chut shel chesed, so then we, and when we see something, we can rebuke in the proper way and not through anger. See, that's the problem. See, when, when, when we try to rebuke somebody sometimes, we saw something, we got angry, and through our anger, are we at giving that person rebuke? So right away, how will that ever, ever work? How can that ever work? When you go to, when you come to a person and you say, you know, you did this and this wrong, and, this, and, and, and especially you come there with an anger, you're, you're upset, right? You're, you're all, you're all, you're, you're hot-headed at the moment, right? So how can that person ever accept anything? We said, that's terrible. It won't work. Then you're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to stir up all of this stuff, Within that person, that stench is going to come out. But when the person connects himself and he understands it's all from Hashem, and Hashem sought, let me see this thing going wrong. So why should I be upset at that? Why should it upset me that this person did this thing wrong? It's you, Hashem. You wanted this to happen. Why am I going to get upset? I run the world. Do I run the world? If I run the world, if I cause this person to do that, and then he did, I could be upset. But I don't cause anyone to do anything. 
Hashem, you, you, you cause me to do everything I'm going to do. You cause everyone else to do everything that they're going to do. Now, you put me in this situation to see this guy right now. So why am I going to get angry at this person right now? That you put me in this situation. Why should I be angry? You understand? Is this universal? Uh, rule? Like, yeah. I mean, would it apply to kids also? Well, what do you mean by, by when kids? When the kids die, they, they drive me crazy. And yeah. I get angry. And then I start like doing, you know, whatever, like doing something. And they, they go even more against it. No, 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 no. So they say you. So you can't. So you can't fight fire with fire, right? Right. They are coming at you, and if you go back with them with with uh, with fire, so then the fire is going to get bigger. You'll have a torch, right? You take one candle and another one, you put it together. Now you have a, you have a torch, right? So you don't want a torch. So how do you do it in a way to not anger them? Sometimes, sometimes you can do it through love. Right? Like the kid did this and this and that. So you go over to the kid, you give the kid a big hug. And you say, I love you. That's it. Give the kid a hug and say, I love you. Huh? The Tommy Boy. I'm not telling you any secret. This, yeah, yeah. this is the answer. Yeah. But again, the Eight Sahara wants me to flare up at the kid. Yeah. But, but again, Hashem put me in that situation. Hashem gave you those kids because He knows that you could do the best job with those kids. That's why He gave you those kids. Hashem knows He gives us each one of our kids. And believe me, I have a lot of trouble with my kid. Don't worry. <laughs> we, we, all do. All do. we all do. We all do. We all do. We all do. And I, I'm telling you, I'm working on this all the time. But if, but, if, but if you can do that, the kid does this, that, or the other thing. And instead of you lashing out at the kid. Instead, you take that opportunity and show the kid unconditional love. Wow. Try it one time. No, no, they won't expect it. They won't expect it. And it's hard, because you really want to... <laughs> but, but think about it. These are your kids. These are your children. They're, they're your flesh and blood. They're your flesh and blood. So, hey, don't you love them? And why are you upset at them? Because they did this and this and or that. Hashem said to them, to do this and this and that to see what you're going to do. It's your test. Mm. So you're learning Talmud Devar, and then you have this guy over here telling you the same thing that you're learning in there, right? Mm. Okay. And why am I telling you this? Because Hashem had me do this now. <laughs> I didn't know what you were learning over there, right? You understand? This is how it works. The whole thing is I understand. I know, I know, I, listen, I got it. But you understand what I'm saying. We can do that with everybody else. Yeah. You go over to the guy, the guy says to you, you know, you see the guy did this or that, the other thing. And you say to him, I know, you know, the guy tells you this and that, you say, you know, wow, you must have had a really hard day today. You must have had a really hard day today. I hope you'll have a great, I hope it'll go well for you later. The guy said, well, what? <laughs> He just, he just, he, he just told you, you know, you're this, that, and the other thing, and then you tell him, well, I, 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 I guess you had a hard day today, right? For me, the person, it's easier with, with uh, other people than, when, than with kids. kids okay, like well, kids everyone has their own situation. Yeah. Someone's not dealing with kids at the moment, so it's this thing at that. Yeah. But, but, but if you take that principle, that understanding we're learning over yeah. here. That, that again, how do I give that toichacha, that I can do it in a way when I have a tefillah shebedin. What's a tefillah shebedin? Revealing Hashem. So I know it's really you, Hashem, behind the whole situation. It's you, Hashem, behind the whole situation. And again, when you, when you give the kid that kiss and the, give the kid that hug and you show that love, and then you, then you could talk to the child and maybe then tell the child, the child will listen to what you have to say. But if, but if again, if you're, they're upset and you're upset and you attack, they would, they're never going to listen to anything you say anyway. It's never going to work. So your efforts are going to go, it's just going to be a waste of the, and then you're going to be upset at yourself while you yelled at them. That's all the eight Sahara. He's just trying to knock us down. He'll try anything he can, any way he can, to knock us down. That's all he's trying to do all day long. That's why we need these lessons, right? <laughs> Look at your tzitzis. Look at your tzitzis. 
Take out your tzitzis. You're upset at the kids. Take out your tzitzis. Remember. Chut shel chesed. Remember the chut shel chesed. Wow, wow. Wow. Shem echad. 39. Look at, count the strings. Count the wines. You'll see it's 39. Count the wines. It's 39. Why is it 39? Because Hashem Echad, right? The Hashem Echad. Hashem Echad is 39. Remember, it's all Hashem. Only you, Hashem. Does that help understand it? No? Yeah. yeah. Try, try it one time, and then let us know how it works. Mm-hmm. Try it one time. Try it. I'm telling you, 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 you'll feel good about yourself, and the, your kids will be like, wow, yeah, yeah, Daddy, yeah. you're amazing. Yeah, no, I, I know definitely it works, but it just... It's hard, that, yeah. That, that very moment. Is I, that's, the, that's the, that's the, that's, ex- yeah. that's the Tfilu Shabbatin yeah. right there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the test, that moment. That's the challenge. Yeah. That's yeah. the, ch- that's exactly the challenge. That's the test right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Hashem should spare us to always do the right thing and guide yeah. us to always do the right yeah. thing. Yeah. And ask Hashem to, yeah. ask to do, let me do the right thing. Let me do the right thing, please, Hashem. Let me do the right thing. Let me, guide me to do the right, that's all I want to do. I want to do the right thing. Guide me to do the right thing. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, right? Then you can give that rebuke in that positive way. The positive rebuke. Positive reinforcement. Let's call it that. They changed it today, right? They call it reinf- positive reinforcement. Then you can give that positive reinforcement. Is that right they say it today? The constructive criticism. And, and no, and David, is that right? Uh, David, a, a, a positive reinforcement, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Positive re- right? We have to be positive, right? Okay, now, so look at this. And Sarah gave to, to, to your brother a, a thousand co- coins. Look what he says. I have to give back this money. I don't want to give it. I want my money, <laughs> Avimela says. But you are here. You made me give back this money. You made me give back this money. I don't want to give it back. I want to keep my money. I don't want to give it back. But what was he really saying? You made me give back the money because the money is not necessarily the money. It's the, the holiness. To give that the holiness that's attached to the money, you made me give that back. In lesson 56 on hey, unbelievable. Lesson 56. Wow, wow. And bring it back and give it back to the tzaddik. Sorry, Menu. Sorry, Menu is the tzaddik. She goes in there. She's there. She uh, sees to the, the, uh, the situation. Sasha, could you imagine the situation she found herself in? She's in this house with this monster. Is that not a bigger test maybe than even the kids yelling at you or something? Right? <laughs> Nightmare. Nightmare. Right? I mean, could you think about that situation? Mm. Think about it for a second. Could, no. could any of the, are any of us ever in a situation as, as desperate as that moment? Any of us? <clears throat> Baruch Hashem, we're not. So all of our situations, so think of sorry, <clears throat> Menu. Yeah, how do you like that? Think of Sari Menu. She was taken into his house to be violated. Does it get worse than that? Right? So, okay, so the kids did this, the kids did that. They spilled this and they, and they threw this at the wall. They threw this at this way. They broke this thing. Okay, all right. Is it as bad as that? Ask yourself this question. Would Sari Maynard rather have been in my situation right now or the situation she found herself in? <laughs> How about you ask yourself that? As bad as this situation is I'm in right now, would Sari Maynard have changed places with me at this moment? Would, she have, would, you, would you want to change places with her? Would you agree to change places with Sari Maynard? You like that idea? Yeah, yeah. Would you have agreed to change places to be in that vulnerable situation? No. But Sari Maynu was able to do that. She overcame that. And again, we learned that all these great people did these things so that we can learn from them so we can be successful. That's why... What? Yeah, as I say, later on, she had, she had a similar... She had a situation with Ishmael and her son. Uh-huh. And she, she made a decision pretty quickly. 
You go out of here. He can't. You can't be with my she son. Never he can't be with my son. Exactly. Right. Same woman. Same woman. Yeah. Yeah. She saw. She she saw the truth. Yeah. Yeah. And I see my child is pure, and this and this one here is a monster. Para Adam, right? Yeah, she knows the Tara monster. Says she's she a, a, she a, a, she a monster when she sees a, a para Adam, a para Adam, a monster. A wild man. Uh, Her other means a wild man, a wild, a, 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 a savage. A savage. Yeah, Vildachaya, yeah, yeah, a savage, right? That's yeah. a wild man, is a savage, right? That's what they are. That's what Yishmael is. Savages. Yeah. Yeah. They're savages. That's all they are. And there's only one thing you can do with them eradicate them. <laughs> there's no peace with them. Eradicate them. I mean, you see, what they, what they want to do to us, they're telling us the, the secret to get rid of them. What they want to do, they want to get rid of us. What they're, they're, what's the secret they're telling us? We got to get rid of you. <laughs> we got to get rid of you. I mean, it's a shem, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's amazing how they're more angry about this, uh, uh, you know, the, the, they make so much noise about this uh, judicial reform than, than Jews are being killed. You don't hear them, there's no protest, there's nothing. Yeah. Nothing, nothing. You know, the stupid government says nothing. Netanyahu will go have another meeting with those jerks. He'll go have another meeting with them. I'm telling you, this is the, here, here, this is the truth. And I'm going to give for you this ksus enayim. Look at this. Avimelech tells Sari Menu, I'm going to give for you this covering, this eye covering. And what is that eye covering? Zet tzitzis. Avimelech is giving Sari Menu the secret because again, when the other side, you'll ask, how does the other side have the secret? How does the other side have the secret? Why, why, was, why was today, today is Zion other, right? Today is Zion other, right? So then, then, then Haman, when he made his lottery, right? He made his lottery to pick when he's going he's gonna to pull off his, uh, his uh, genocide of the Jewish people, right? He was so happy when it came out in Adar, right? Why? He says, oh, that's when Moshe Rabbeinu died. Moshe Rabbeinu died. It's going to be a good month for me. It's going to be. How did he know that? How many Jews today don't even know today's Zion other? It's Moshe Rabbeinu's yard, his birthday, his yard site. They'll know his yard site, but who they know it's his birthday? How many Jews? How many people? Haman knew that. So, Haman understood it. Saddam Hussein too. He knew. He, yeah. He, he knew it. Yeah. He knew it. Hitler and Mach Shemam knew, knew that every Jew is special. He understood that, that, that we are more special than them. He was right. We are more special than everyone else. We are, we, are, we, are, we are the chosen nation. They are not. They can't stand that. They can't, the world can't, the UN can't stand that. The UN can't stand the fact that I'm Chabes I'm Yisrael. We are the chosen nation. That's the truth. Through that, you can get that Chut Shal Chesed. You can attach yourself to the Chutzel Chesed. You attach yourself to the to the to the to the Kina, the harp of the Mashiach, the Kisei Yakovay, the throne of glory. All through the Tzitzit, through the Chutzel Chesed. When you give that rebuke in the positive way, when you see the thing that goes wrong, and you realize that it's really you, Hashem, and that's the Tefilah Shabbatin. Shehu Bechinas Tzitzis. And how do you get that Tzchus through your Tzitzis? Through the garment with the four, the tassels, like you read the other day, remember? The tasseled garment. <laughs> remember we read that the other day? Uh, more than I read the, the tasseled garment, right? Unbelievable. Anyone that you'll have to give noichachas. So the Torah, the Torah uses this word, what does that mean, noichachas? Look at this word. Sorry, man, I'm going to give you the Taichacha Hatayva. You're going to be able to give positive rebuke. 
You're going to be able to give a rebuke that's going to be a positive reinforcement. That's going, that's going, that's going to be that's going to be a wonderful thing. You're going to have that. Look at that. We finish off today with Maisha. That was the Teichacha of Maisha Rabbeinu. Maisha Rabbeinu was able to give Teichacha and rebuke the Klal Yisrael in a way. How did Maisha Rabbeinu do that? How did Maisha Rabbeinu do that? Because he was always connected to Hashem. Maisha Rabbeinu was ready to talk to Hashem any moment of his life. Every moment he was ready. Right? That's why he had to get rid of his wife, Sipora. Remember, he gave, gave, he gave up his wife, Sipora. Why? Because he didn't want to ever have to be with his wife. And, 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 and the next thing you know, he would be Tuma Tumas Keri, right? And then he wouldn't be able to speak to the Rabbi Shalom. He had no idea when Hashem was going to appear to him. He had no idea. So therefore, he didn't want to be with the one. He didn't want to be because he didn't want to be impure. Maish Rabbeinu didn't want to be unbelievable. But again, Maish Rabbeinu was such a tzaddik, we can't, even, we can't even fathom. It's something that we cannot fathom. But we can understand how Maish Rabbeinu gave the rebuke to Klal Yisrael. And he did it in that most beautiful way. And that one mistake that Maishra seemingly made, that one mistake he seemingly made, when he looked at the Jewish people and he said, and he said to them, Shimu Noha Remember he said those words, listen up you rebels. Remember when it came with the Maishra and Mariva, <coughs> the, 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 with the stone, remember? And Hashem said to him to talk to the rock. Do you remember what happened over there? It's nice to talk to Maishra Rabbeinu. I said, we'll talk two minutes about that, right? Maishra Rabbeinu, Hashem said, talk to the rock. So the Medrash, no, the Medrash says that he was talking to rocks. Maish Rabbeinu was, was talking to, there were many rocks there. There, weren't one, there wasn't one rock. So he went over, he was talking to a rock, and he talked to another rock, and he talked to another rock, and another one, and, not, and nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. So what does he do? He takes his stick, he remembers. Wait a second. Last time, Hashem said, take the stick, hit the rock. Oh, so maybe I'll do that again. Moshe Rabbeinu took the stick and he hit the rock. So there's a, mis- there's, a, there's a machlaikis. Did he get punished because he hit the rock? Or did he get punished because he said, Shimu no Listen up, you rebels. Before he spoke to the rock, he looked at the people and he said, Shimu no Listen up, you rebels. Again, Moshe Rabbeinu on his level, on his level, he had a, he had a difficult time with Klai Yisrael. <laughs> he had a very, very difficult time. Right? All he saw, he saw constantly the beauty of Hashem, and all he was dealing with was pettiness. He was dealing with pettiness all through his all through the time in the desert. All was just with through pettiness. True? I we need some meat, I need the water, give me this, I need this, I need that, I need this. What, what, what? Hashem is giving everything you need here. Don't you see that? And he saw <coughs> Maish Rabbeinu saw that. But the people kept doing so. Maish Rabbeinu was worn out at that time. He was just worn out at that time. And the, the, the Kedusha Slavi says that really, that really, it, 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 it's one of the same. Because had Maish Rabbeinu, had Maish Rabbeinu uh, said to the Jewish people and spoke to them kindly, says the Kedusha Slavi, so then the rock, which was created by Hashem, to serve Klal Yisrael would have felt compelled to give the water. You understand? Think yeah. about that again. If Moshe Rabbeinu says the Jewish people are good and the Jewish people are doing the right thing and serving Hashem the right way, so then what happens? So then what happens? Then HaKadosh Baruch then the rock says, oh, if the Jewish people are doing what they're supposed to do, so that means I have to do what I'm supposed to do. And I was created to give water. But when Maish Rabbeinu says to the Jewish people, listen up, Shimu Noam listen up, you're rebels. So now the rock says, hey, wait a second, Moshe, if the Jewish people aren't doing what they're supposed to do, why do I have to do what I have to do? Why should I give the water? So then what does Maish Rabbeinu do? He takes his stick and he bangs the rock and he makes him give the water. But he only had to bang the rock because he said first to the right, people, right, Shimu na right, right, right. But every other time, Maish Rabbeinu spoke to us in the most pleasing, delightful way. And again, why did Maish Rabbeinu have to do that? Because Maish Rabbeinu couldn't go into Eretz Yisrael. Hashem set it up. He also had to do that so we'd learn. 
Yeah. So we, we have lesson for us. Of course. No, 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 no. But ultimately, we know that HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Maisha Benu couldn't go into Eretz Yisrael. Because right. if he would have came into Eretz Yisrael, and then the base of Migdus would have been built. He's the and Mashiach. Then, He's the Mashiach. Wait, wait. No, no, no. no wait a second. No, no, he was the Mashiach, but he wasn't the Mashiach at that time. No, but if he went in there... Israel, exactly. He exa- no, no. But then we would have done the wrong thing. Had we have done the wrong thing, so then Hashem would not have destroyed the base of Migdash, and he would destroy the Jewish people. Mm-hmm. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't go into Eretz Yisrael. He couldn't go in. Mm-hmm. So Hashem puts this thought in his mind. To look at the people in that way. Look at this, look at this, look at this. How, it, how, how Hashem yeah. is running everything. He put the thing that Moshe <laughs> Rabbeinu should look at the people at this time, at this way, and use the word Shimon Amirim. Only then. Only then. Unbelievable. You see how everything Hashem is calculating, everything we say. Especially, look at I'm giving you an example with Moshe Rabbeinu. How Moshe Rabbeinu was calculating every single word he was going to say. Every single word, especially our words, of course, of course, of course. Every word, and he had to use those words. So again, we're, we're learning the idea of giving the Teichacha. You give it in a, in a good way. In a good way. So Moshe Rabbeinu always gave the Teichacha in a good way. And he helped us do tshuva all the time. Right? That's what Moshe Rabbeinu did. He helped us do tshuva. That's why we have the Yud Gimel Midas Sarachim. Why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu went to bat for Kala Yisrael. And he always went to bat. And he always will go to bat for Kala Yisrael. But it was for the goodness of Kala Yisrael that Moshe Rabbeinu used those words at that time. You understand? It wasn't Chas Shalom anything else. And now we're learning this idea, this beautiful concept, that Sari Menu had to be taken into the house of Avi Melech. Why? Because, because she had a job to do over there. She had a job to do over there to go into that, that place of impurity. And in that place where was the storehouse of all the, the treasures, the spiritual sparks, which, which was the storehouse of all the spiritual sparks. She went into that, she was taken into that place to not be violated, but to attack and take back all of the, all of the sparks. How do we know that? Because Avimelech gave the 10,000 silver coins and he gave the riches to, to Avram Avinu. He didn't want to do that. Why did he do it? Because Sari Menu made him do it. Made him do it. And that's when we can, and that's how we're going to end off now. That's when we, when we're challenged by any situation, when we're confronted with any situation, and we look at that situation, and we do what Yitzchak does, laugh. You laugh at the situation. You know it's not, it's not the situation I think it is. There's something much deeper here. Find what's deeper. That's Hashem in the situation. Find that, and that's the salvation. Shkoyach, everybody.